Hello YouTubers out there. Welcome to the Parkersburg Central HO Scale Railway. Just going to do a, a short video here. Uh, started up the, the channel and uh, just sort of a secondary channel. I'm really into drag racing and cars, but uh, thought I'd do a Moto Railroad channel. This is just my... Uh, somewhat small HO uh, scale railroad I'm building and uh, <clears throat> basically I guess to start off with I got into trains actually at a young age I'm pushing 50 now and uh, when I was about I used to go up to my grandparents house and they had a, uh, just a circular sort of uh, CN rail uh, type layout and then uh, eventually I wanted my own layout so I, <coughs> I constructed a 4x8 uh, layout at my parents house and then uh, eventually uh, I started working on a little more serious layout with a sort of family friend of mine and uh, we built it to a certain point and uh, this was about the mid early 90s I ended up getting into other things as a teenager cars to, uh, truthfully and uh I sold all the stuff I had, the the whole that whole setup, and uh, never really touched model railroading again until uh, it would have been, uh, I guess it would have been November or so, twenty twenty one, and uh, that same guy, the family friend of mine who was helping me build that layout, he he unfortunately passed away, and he had uh, started his own layout in an apartment. And uh, his daughter graciously donated everything he did. So, like, here are some pics of sort of what it looked like. And then uh, what I did is a friend of mine, uh, another model weirdo guy actually, uh, we transported everything to here and then I sort of extended the layout so it it uh, <clears throat> has more of a, a continuous sort of a continuous loop set up. Uh, he only really had point to point and it was a shelf layout. I extended this out too. This was, as you can sort of tell under there, you can see how the, uh, I extended it. Not awesome bench work, but it works. <clears throat> it's not professional grade, but anyway, so I sort of just started building my own version of it and uh, I wanted a continuous loop. So it's got sort of a figure eight, kind of this strange figure eight. It's all, um, <clears throat> it's a, it's a mix of H, it's a mix of Atlas snap track and, uh, <coughs> and and uh, uh, pico mostly pico flex track a lot of pico switches i was able to salvage all these switches off his original layout um so i haven't actually had to buy a switch yet so that's been really good i've just been using uh, all his stuff um and yeah this is it basically it, i guess the, the the thing about this railroad is it started off like, oh, I'm going to make it prototypical, like Algoma Central. And then it ended up that uh, I just like, I can't really get into all the like exact prototypical stuff. And I looked at how much stuff costs these days. And I'm like, I'm going to sort of have to use a lot of used stuff to make this work. Because my other hobby, uh, drag racing, takes up a lot of money. So um, this one, what I'm finding is I'm just buying used stuff at uh, either uh, off of like Facebook Marketplace or uh, at uh, train shows, which is great. I mean, I picked up all these box cars for a great price. And I, another thing too, I should mention, I really like the nostalgia. I really like the '90s uh, Atlas sort of stuff like this, for instance. Your Atlas layouts. I used to as a younger kid slash teenager. I used to lust over these things, right? So I sort of like uh, that old Atlas look. <coughs> now, for me, I didn't really use a track plan. I just thought, like, let's see how the continuous loop fits in the space I have. So I made that, and uh, then I, I've just been sort of adding on to it. 
I'm I'm hoping obviously that it have some kind of uh, operational stuff like this for instance would be the yard there'd be a grain elevator uh, <clears throat> this area here will be uh, there this is a diesel shop which actually I picked up used or another thing and then uh, there'll be a diesel refilling station over there and then I'm thinking here I'm making this actually into a passenger car station over here is propane something else and uh, here I want to make it a cityscape. I want to make a, a retaining wall, so about that high, and then just have um, your sort of backdrop buildings in there, and then there'll be a tunnel here. So there'll be a cityscape, potentially a highway coming this way. And this here, because I picked up this building, I'm thinking of making this the oil refinery kind of thing which um i know is kind of close to a city but maybe this is like some fantasy place where environmental laws aren't uh, really uh that uh are bendable let's just say so anyways yeah that's uh that's sort of the gist of it but yeah i just love the, i guess getting back i love the old stuff like i used to always want these backdrops when i was a kid and I didn't have the skill set or whatever, so I was like, I gotta, I gotta put these in. So these are the Walders, Insta scene, and uh, they're both the most kind of industrial slash urban ones you can get. And uh, the one I really wanted was a freight yard one, but now it's discontinued, so I can't even get it anymore. But yeah, I, I know it's not hundred percent realistic, but one thing too, I always wanted is I always wanted the Atlas up and over, and for sure, yeah, I realize like. That's not 100% realistic. I just love that look though because, again, going back to those books and me lusting over it, it's something I always wanted. And it does look pretty cool, like when you have the trains passing over something else. And I put that there thinking, like, well, the train reason why that needs to be there is because there's a yard here. So it just made more sense to have a bunch of bridges going over a yard than having a bunch of, you know, sort of. Uh, crosses there you know so anyways we'll all see um some of the buildings this one i i, I purchased used awesome 25 bucks and uh, the guy did a good job on it and uh this will this is gonna i sort of envision this being the diesel shop area like i'm trying to find another building for here like an administrative slash machine shop um and then back here um this is one of the buildings i inherited this Pike stuff, small onion house, that will go there. Pick this oldie up, oldie at, oldie up at uh, the uh, the train sale. So that will be the sand and pump house. And plus I have some other small little things like this. That, that I sort of, this is, I guess I called Heritage, Diesel Pill of City. Double, tra uh, double track diesel service facility. I'll try to incorporate all that into here. So... I'll be there. The yard, pretty much, maybe some, a little bit of scenicking. There's a green elevator. I, I inherited that kit, and then I built it. So, it came out pretty good. I remember, though, some of the stuff, frustrations when I was uh, a teenager trying to put together these, these kind of sort of kits that have, you know, happen again. So, but I think it came out okay. I'm, I'm going to try to uh, put some more decals on this. And then, uh, maybe a little scene up there. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, and then the diesel shop. I'm gonna put a decal here, Parkersburg Shops. So that it, that makes a big difference. And uh, I think this is where I might actually start the actual scenic ink process to to start it. I was watching various videos, and they said you should start scenic ink as you go, kind of thing. And I also read like a do a one foot by one foot area. So I'll do that. Um, other than that, this, this, I'll show you how it runs. It, it's a DCC. So, plug it in and I'll just give you a shot of it. Okay, guys, I'll just give a short clip of the... Uh, <clears throat> this is probably my best locomotive. It's a Bowser uh, DCC. I think it's, uh, pro, it's supposed to be a, a uh, <clears throat> SD40 or something, but I'll just give a short video of it running. I, this is my best locomotive. And then I, I love this old Atlas one I have here. I got it converted to DCC, so I'm hoping to pick up one of those old Atlas ones. Maybe, I know it totally doesn't make sense, but I love the Erie Lackawanna. 
paint scheme and actually uh, that's what i had one of these as a year lackawanna back before i sold everything <clears throat> i like to get it back one day but we'll see but that's been an atlas converted to dc to dcc no no sound and it pulls well i love it and then there's a there's a bachman uh dcc that i inherited as well but uh, i'll just show you this one for now this video is going to be a bit long i guess All right, guys, you get the picture. So hopefully I, I get some more work done. On it, uh, on it somewhat soon. I'd like to, I'd like to actually work on some of the box cars now. I've laid all the track, most of it anyways. I need to wire some more leads in here for the for various leads in here and everything. So for the dcc leads so i need to solder and wire that as well <clears throat> but yeah i like to get these box cars They're, that's got katie couplers but i picked up some uh conversion stuff because i also got some other other stuff i'd like to convert anyways uh yeah so hopefully i can keep on this and we'll see what all happens but yeah this is the parkersburg central railway talk to you later